Hi, everyone. Larry here. We invited some friends to Big Idea to watch our new show. Afterwards, they asked some of the production team a few questions. Why did Tom My run away from his best friend? Why did Tom run away from his best friend, Huck? Well, it's because Huck wanted to help little Yimmy, uh, and Tom didn't want to help because Tom had something he wanted to do somewhere else. So Tom decided that he would rather do his own thing than to help little Yimmy and go with Huck. How many of you guys know what the lesson of this show is? Oh. Oh, very good, James, helping others. It says it right behind me, yes. <laughs> Clark Wayne, we started off with this idea of him being a Mark Twain-ish kind of character as a storyteller, um, and perhaps a bit of Foghorn Leghorn in his, you know, kind of, well, well, I'll never, I'll never. And we kind of went that way with some guys. But then somebody at, at Big Idea, I think, suggested, well, what about George, you know, the narrator from The Toy That Saved Christmas and Rack Shack and Benny? What about that guy? Could he be the Clark Wayne? So I did a test. I said, well, let me try it. Let me try the narration as, as George. Um, and I wasn't sure it worked, but I sent it down. And then I went, that's it. We got it. We're bringing George back. All right. We'll bring George back. What do you know about that? He's been out of work for 10 years, living off Social Security, and now he's a star again. Needless to say, he couldn't be happier. A variety of people. Sometimes the writer will, if, it's, if you know right on the outset, a very particular Bible verse that you want to use. Um, we'll choose that Bible verse because it, it does a really good job. In this case, I do think Phil chose it. it was, I think it was in his original script. Yeah. Um, we've had a couple shows where we get all the way to the end and we kind of have to think real careful about what the right verse would be. Do I know you? Oh, don't mind me. I, I'm just the narrator. Okie dokie. Um, we also have to use special, like, microphones that make you have different sounds to do the voices? When we record the voices, we don't do anything special at that point. We just record them on a, on a microphone. So just a regular microphone? Regular, expensive microphone. But then, the magic of computers, we actually shrink the voices just a little bit. We make them a little bit higher, so then Larry sounds a little bit more like a cartoon character. All those in favor, say, mm. Yeah, sweetie. Um, how did you make a Bible verse? He was hard. He was a hard character work, to work with because we wanted him to be very simple, but we didn't want him to be too dumb, you know. Uh, so that was something we worked a lot with, and we were developing it to make sure that he came across as a simple guy, but that he still was pretty smart when you really got to know him. I felt like while we were working on it, that we had an opportunity to make little Jimmy a little bit sillier. So that's why we put on that silly blonde wig that he has on, and we put later hosen on him. Uh, and we gave him a little bit of an accent and made him kind of Swedish. And then we decided we would call him Little Yimmy instead of Little Jimmy. I have a question. So in Sweden, do they not pronounce J's? Oh, don't mind me. I, I'm just the narrator. Um, the answer is it just kind of depends. In this case, we kind of started with the idea that we wanted to tell a VeggieTales version of Huckleberry Finn. And we looked at what kind of the major themes in that story were. And we felt that a really logical or a really natural uh, lesson to tell from that story was, was the lesson about helping others. So in this case, they both kind of came forth at the same time. Hey, shouldn't we be coming up on m m m Musketeen? There it is. One of the things we try to do in VeggieTales is make things factually based. Realizing it may not mean anything to a kid when they first see it, but maybe years down the road, they'll recollect and say, hey, that was true. And yeah, it was. <laughs> Uh, one of those being like this with Muscatine with Phil. That's, that's yes, that's Phil's hometown. Uh, St. Louis World's Fair was another one that Brian worked very hard to get actual, you know, data that was legitimate fair, World's Fair at the time. Originally, the climax of the show was set at, at a World's Fair in Memphis, Tennessee. So I kind of, in development, pushed the story forward about 20 years so that we could set it in St. Louis in 1904 where there actually was a World's Fair. So the Ferris wheel that you see in our story is actually kind of loosely based on this real Ferris wheel that really was in St. Louis in 1904. I've got a song! You're a lifesaver. Um, on the show here, I, you heard me use my whistle. If you listen to the Silly Song again, I use some of my sound effects. In the Silly Song, there's some rhythms. I use that one. You heard the slide whistle already. You want to go to sleep again, Brian? Okay. There we go. I started the show 
had half the songs written and recorded, then completely left it and wrote the score for Pirates, went to Prague, recorded an orchestra, then came back to this, pulled it back out of the, the file, opened it back up, and uh, so, and then finished it up. So some of it was written well over a year ago, and then some of it I was working on literally the night before we mixed it. A lot of the music, a lot of the score, the background music, uh, relies on bluegrass styles of music, uh, folk music, Americana music. Um, but then as we get down closer to St. Louis, we really start to bring in the Dixieland sound. All of those styles of music, they're uh, very rooted in our country. It's historical music um, that was not brought over from Europe or some other countries. I think it's fun sometimes that a, a child might you know, hear some of this music and over the years maybe come back and later on discover Dixieland music for what it is and say, oh, well, if that sounds familiar, it, it sounds like that VeggieTales show I saw. Kurt always starts in the computer with synthesized stuff. And in this case, he had actually played out all the banjo stuff uh, for the score and then brought in our banjo player for just the songs and just to play the banjo on the songs and, and it would mix fine. Well, when we laid it all in, it made the synth stuff sound so bad it was just too clean, you know. You could really tell the real one that had that you could really hear that picking and the steel. And so when we played it up against the synth, it was like, okay, we gotta call this guy, call Mike back in. When Dooley and the bad guy enters the scene, we didn't want to make it too scary or too ominous, so we did some things like uh, using old timey, like out of tune tack pianos, like you'd hear in a in a western sort of that old movie like, oh, here's the bad guy, instead of real scary, here's the bad guy. I figure we're coming up on, oh, hold on. <laughs> water, water everywhere. Doing a show about the mighty Mississippi is a producer's nightmare. Ooh, river. That sounds expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it was difficult to create all the water. Whenever you say I want to do water in computer animation, uh, a lot of effort gets put into making that water very realistic. Uh, in making sure that there's you know, lots of detail in how the current flows and, and how the water ripples behind a boat. Um, I pushed to make the water really simple uh, and very cartoony. That actually feels uh, different than you might expect, but in the end is, is really beautiful. Well, the Biscuit of Zazamarandabo sprung forth from the wildly creative minds of our good friends Andrew Peterson and Randall Goodgame. They're the guys who wrote Monkey, which was the silly song from the last show that I directed, Wizard of Haas. Uh, and these guys are just the craziest folks. They'll, they throw stuff up against the wall and, and about 90% of it falls off the wall, but 10% of it sticks to the wall and it's really funny and really good. I knew that, that Randall and I were supposed to be coming up with another silly song. So here are the lyrics that we have that, right. that I wrote, that I came up with. Uh, yeah. This morning I had made buttermilk biscuits and sausage gravy, and I was thinking about what a glorious thing it is that, that we live in a world with sausage gravy and biscuits, that particular combination of, of foods. And, uh, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe the new silly song can be about that. When Andrew came to me and said that he had a song about, a song idea about a biscuit, I told him that I had a biscuit when I was growing up named Zaza Miranda Book. He, he said something about how he had a biscuit named Zaza Miranda Bow, but that's completely not true. He's just trying to ride my coattails. So yeah. the biscuit of Zaza Miranda Bow, would, like, the word that I came up with. You're kind of getting into my space. I'm sorry, bit. I'm sorry. On family vacations when, you know, dad wants to go see, you know, the giant thumbprint on the wall of the cave, and everybody else is kind of like, Dad, yeah, we just want to go on the roller coaster, but Dad says, oh, it'll be great fun. So James McNabb of the Guild of Go, he made the biscuit so long ago, and the people they traveled to see it glow all around it as a Miranda bow. When you're going on a road trip, whoever's driving has a million things to do before they leave. Yeah, we just tried to think of all the annoying things that grown-ups have to do before they leave, which, when I was a kid, was always stopping by the bank. What's that you say? We can't leave yet today. We just got an errand to run. I just uh, and going by the post office and then filling up the car with gas 
and uh, and to a child that's maddening. For the explorer that finds uh, the biscuit of Zaza Miranda, I wanted his name to be Archimbra, but uh, Andrew really wanted it to be Archimbo and drop the R. Uh, one of my great uncles was named Archimbo, and uh, and I wanted to include him just to kind of pay homage to my ancestors um, and include him in the song. But Randall thinks that. Uh, the correct name was Archimbro, which is uh, about the silliest thing I've ever heard. There was just no way that I could get Andrew to budge on the matter. He just really thought it sounded better, Archimbo. This is my great uncle Archimbo. And so, after quite a bit of fighting and uh, and wrestling, we uh, we finally decided that I would I would kind of you know be the servant and let Archimbro be the name in the song. And so Randall. Uh, uh, felt good about that, but then I changed it that night, and then the next day when we went and played it for the people at Dig Idea, I changed it back to Archambeau, and they all loved it, and so, which, you know, to me proves my point that that is the correct name. I guess they're all riding in a car together, so. Mm -hmm. Van, yeah. Well, car, I mean. Uh, maybe like a minivan, or a, I've always an SUV, a car. it could be an SUV. Like a hatchback. Or like a Scion? Not a Scion, like a, a Subaru. Like an Element? Like a Subaru. Kind of like an Outback. And this is or a minivan. I like minivan better right. than all those ideas. I just, you know, you gotta really, you gotta give and take in the songwriting thing. You gotta be willing to put it everything out there and then just pull it back and and let, you know, give and take. It's 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 a great relationship. He took all my good ideas, like always. He always takes my ideas.